Hi, I'm David Buckley from uh, Blackrock Castle Observatory, and today we're going to show you a very simple and very easy and kind of crafty exercise to try to find the moon in the sky. Uh, as an astronomer, I often get, a questions from, get questions from people, children, sometimes adults, where's the moon in the sky tonight, or is the moon going to be out tonight, or when can I expect to see the moon, or how come I didn't see the moon tonight? but I saw it this morning when I, uh, when I woke up. How come I can sometimes see the moon in the daytime sky? Well, this handy little headband is going to help understand this. Um, so to do this, basically all you have to do is have some long strip of paper, maybe about six or seven centimeters wide. Uh, you can do that either if you have access to uh, ticker tape from a uh, receipt roll like this or if you don't have that you basically just take a standard piece of typing paper uh, or uh, photocopy paper and put it uh, cut it into three seven centimeter wide strips and then tape those strips end to end but not all the way around just three in a row then the next thing to do is to measure, once you have them taped together, like I have, is to measure your head. So what you do is you put the strips of paper around your head and put a little mark at where they overlap, like this, and then cut it so there's maybe a seven or eight centimeter piece that overlaps. Okay. Then, on the strip of paper in the front, where uh, the other piece would be overlapped underneath, you want to draw your new moon. So the way I would do that is to just draw a circle and fill it in nice and dark. You don't have to be fancy with your drawings. My artistic ability is extremely limited. So I just drew a dark circle and I will label it new moon. N E W. Okay. Then what you want to do is measure the distance from the center of the new moon to about the center of your overlap point. And for me, that turns out to be about 64 centimeters. Okay. So half of 64 is 32. So that means that 32 centimeters from your new moon that's where you're going to want to draw your full moon. Full moon is easy for anyone to draw because basically it's just a circle that's not filled in. So right at that point I'm going to draw a circle and label it full moon. Okay. So now I have new moon over here, full moon over here, so that the new moon will end up being in the front of my head, the full moon will be in the back of my head. Okay, so now halfway between new moon and full moon, that can be estimated just by kind of folding and marking halfway, okay, that's going to be first quarter. So the way you draw first quarter is you make a circle and cut it in half with a line like this and fill in the left hand side and leave the right hand side light. Okay, so that will be first quarter. And the reason it's called first quarter is because it's one quarter of the way around in its cycle of phases. So even though you see it as a half moon, it's called a first quarter because of where it is, not so much because of what it looks like. And now, between full moon and the overlap where the new moon would be, you will draw third quarter. Okay. So third quarter is going to be like a reverse letter D, as such. And this is three quarters of the way around. Okay. And so those are your quarter phases. Okay. So now what you need to do is fill in 
between new moon and first quarter is going to be waxing crescent. A waxing crescent is where the lit part of the moon ends up being kind of a banana shape or a croissant shape. That's why it's called crescent. And that's a waxing crescent. Okay. And then between first quarter and full moon, you have a waxing gibbous. Now a waxing gibbous is a circle that's sort of a reversed waxing crescent. The dark part is a crescent, and the light part is kind of oval shaped. So this would be a waxing gibbous, as such. Okay. Then you go to the other side of the full moon, and halfway between full moon and third quarter, you want to draw a waning gibbous. Okay. Waning gibbous would be with the dark part on the other side. As such. And then between the third quarter and the overlap where your new moon will be once you finish your headband is going to be a waning crescent. Now, you really don't have to worry too much about how tidy your drawings are. The important thing is knowing where the moon is as it's around your head. So now I'm going to make myself look very silly by putting this around my head and taping my headband like this. Okay. Now, although this looks like a silly crown at a children's party, it's actually a device for helping you find where the moon is during the daytime. All you have to do is go outside, find out where the sun is, make sure that the new moon is at your forehead, and let's say the sun is up there in the sky. What I would do is tilt my forehead toward the sun, making sure not to stare at the sun because that's bad for your eyes. You don't want to do that. Okay. And then you also have to find where north is. North, uh, you would want the back of your head to be pointing north and really the top of your head to be pointing to where the north star is. It doesn't have to be exact. Basically, if you point the back of your head north and tilt it up approximately 45 degrees, that'll be a great approximation for any mid-north latitudes. So if I find the sun, put my forehead facing toward the sun, and put my, the point of my head pointing toward where the North Star should be because the back of my head is pointing north. Then I know that if today, let's say, the moon was at a waning crescent, if you looked up on a calendar or on the internet that it was a waning crescent, I would know that the sun is there and the waning crescent is at this part of my head. My tape is coming off. The waning crescent is at this point of my head, so the waning crescent would be in that part of the sky right there. Okay. The third quarter moon is above my right ear, so that means wherever my right ear is pointing, that's approximately where the first quarter moon, or the third quarter moon is. And in fact, in the morning sky, if you happen to be looking at the sun in the morning sky, and it happened to be a third quarter moon, you could look at where the sun is, point your forehead to it, and chances are you would see the waning, uh, the uh, third quarter moon, or even the waning gibbous moon in the western sky. And because any, any of the phases beyond the quarter phases are bright enough to see through the blue sky, you can actually see the, the moon in the daytime sky. If it's a waxing gibbous moon in the afternoon, or if it's a waning gibbous moon or third quarter in the morning sky. So, I hope you enjoyed making this moon phase headband and I hope you can do a neater job than I did uh, but it's a great little project for kids and it helps you actually find where the moon is in the sky.